If you'd like to turn to Exodus chapter 30, Exodus 30, and we'll read the first 10 verses. Beginning at verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon, of acacia wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same, that is, of acacia wood. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, the top thereof, and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. And two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it, by the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it. And they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make the staves of acacia wood and overlay them with gold and thou shalt put it before the veil that is in the ark of the testimony that is by the ark of the testimony before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee and Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresseth the lamps he shall burn incense upon it and when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generations. He shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonements. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Lord, and we ask God to bless his word. That passage of scripture highlights why we should never be slow to approach God. We should never grow weary in the ministry of prayer. Because in coming to him and presenting our hearts before him, we're engaging in the most beautiful privilege. We enter in through and we release to God a sweet and holy aroma. The title tonight is Incense, Sweet and Holy. In the opening six verses of that little passage, the altar of incense is made and installed according to God's instructions. He's told them how it should be and what it should be made of. And three things stand out to us in those opening verses. It's made of acacia wood. It's overlaid with gold. And it's placed before the veil. It's made of acacia wood. Just like the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Testimony was made of acacia wood. You find that in uh, Exodus 25.10. The ark is made of acacia wood. The altar here is made of acacia wood. And the reason is acacia wood is durable. It doesn't decay. So the choice of making the ark of the testimony out of acacia wood or the, the direction for that to happen symbolizes in the stability of the material, symbolizes the stability of God's presence. It doesn't decay. It doesn't wear away. God's presence stands. Nothing can dilute the presence of God. 
acacia wood is lasting. And so making this altar of sweet incense out of acacia wood says the same kind of thing. It symbolizes it's the enduring nature of this altar. The need for sacrifice, the need to remember that sacrifice will never cease. There is always a need for sinful people to have a sacrifice on their behalf. That will never stop until the Lord returns. And so this altar, which is a smaller version of the bronze altar upon which the sacrifice is actually made, it's a replica in a small version, will never cease to have an impact. Then, of course, this acacia wood that doesn't decay is overlaid with gold. And, and overlaying it with gold symbolizes God's divinity, God's purity. And it raises this altar to a new level, to a different level. It raises the altar up to sacred status you see it's this altar of sweet incense that demonstrates the beauty of entering into the presence of almighty God the altar the bronze altar on which the sacrifice is made, that is self-explanatory for the purposes of us being allowed to enter God's presence through the sacrifice. But this altar that burns incense symbolizes the beauty of being able to enter into the presence of God. And then, of course, it symbolizes facilitating the people of God coming in, carrying upon them a sweet fragrance because they've just had to walk through the cloud of smoke that the fragrance was burning. And then we notice not only is it made of acacia wood and overlaid with gold, but it's placed in front of the veil. It's placed in front of the veil which barred the way into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was. In Exodus 26, 35, we're told that the veil is shielding the ark. And above the ark, the mercy seat where God promises to meet his people. And we know that the mercy seat, we know that it's a, a symbol of Christ. How precious it is to be able to go into that holy place. To go into that holy place where God would meet with the high priest, Aaron. A symbol of our great high priest, Christ. But we are in Christ. He's our representative. And so when Christ is meeting with Almighty God, we are meeting with Almighty God. What a beautiful privilege it is for us tonight to come to God in prayer. And so the, the ark of sweet incense was made of 
acacia wood which doesn't decay, overlaid with gold which lifts it to a sacred level. And it's placed in front of the veil. And that placement is really significant. I hinted at it just a minute ago. In verse 7 it says, Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning. And then in verse 8, when Aaron lighteth the lamps at night or in the evening, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Lord. Aaron would go in and light the burning fire. And this incense smell would just rise up to God in the morning and it would be burning all day. And then he would go in in the evening and he would cause it to burn all night. This beautiful aroma rising to God all of the time. Sweet incense always before him. And that means whenever Aaron entered in beyond the veil, he had to go through that cloud. Entering into the presence of God would have filled the nostrils of this high priest with this beautiful perfume. It becomes the perfume of God's presence. He walks in, and he, as I said, he, he carries it on his clothing. Nothing other than God's recipe could be used. You shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering. No, no strange incense. God doesn't want any other aroma than the aroma that he has decreed to come off this altar. This sweet perfume burning on the, the replica altar Symbolizing the sweetness of the perfume that God receives from the sacrifice itself. Thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest. He enters into the very presence of Almighty God, the holiest, the holy of holies. And the aroma of Christ to God is a sweet perfume. He carries that with him as he appears in the presence of God. The sweet aroma of his sacrifice upon the altar of the cross. But you see, that's the only way that you and I can approach God. We approach God through Christ tonight in our prayer meeting. And we enter in because of what Jesus accomplished. We enter into the very intimate presence of God. And as we come before him tonight in prayer, he is receiving from us that beautiful, sweet aroma. Incense, sweet and holy. Isn't that amazing? I don't know what you'll pray tonight. But whatever it is you bring before God, whatever it is you say audibly or in your place, it's a sweet perfume to our God because we come 
through the sacrifice of Jesus. Here is the high priest, we're told, Aaron, applying the blood of the sacrifice to the horns of this altar once a year. Hebrews 9.25, we're told this as well, that the, that the priest come in, comes in once a year. To put the blood on the horns of the altar. A constant reminder of the beauty of that sacrifice, burning all the time. Once a year, he applies the blood. But the incense of that sacrifice on behalf of the people is rising up to God all the time. We should never be tired praying. We should never say, I'm no bothering tonight. Because you see, the reality is that every time we come before God in prayer, He, our Father, enjoys the aroma of Jesus. And we think our prayers are about us, what we want, what we need. And of course, that's what we pray. But we bring them in Christ. We bring them through the sacrifice of Christ. And so the prayers we pray, in essence, are for God. The sacrifice of Christ was made for God in the first instance. And the prayers of the saints are made to God in the first instance for his pleasure. Imagine tonight when you begin to pray. Imagine our Father in heaven. <sighs> Receiving that precious aroma of Jesus. How good is it? Incense, sweet and holy. And of course, this golden altar and its burning speaks of the constant, the perpetual is the word, the perpetual intercession of Jesus Christ. So we are gathered here tonight to pray and we release to God this beautiful perfume. We come into his presence bringing with us that beautiful perfume. We release it as we pray, but we need to remember that Jesus Christ is praying for us and that the perfume of his prayers is overwhelming. That is a sweet incense. Sweet and holy indeed. We are here to pray to God tonight, but Jesus Christ is praying for us tonight. Can you catch just a hint of the perfume of his words? We come before God tonight and we release to him this glorious aroma as we pray for the issues in our lives or as a church. And God enjoys that. But the reality is, Jesus Christ has already been praying for those issues in your life and mine. He has already what is it in your heart right now at this moment you're thinking of? 
And as you release that to God tonight, God receives sweet and holy incense. But he's already received it from Jesus. Because that issue that's in your heart and mind right now, that you want to pray for, Jesus has been praying for. And the aroma of his prayers have been rising up to God, perpetually rising up to God, will never cease rising to God. That's why we can be confident as we go forward, Christian. We can be confident, church, as we go forward, because Jesus Christ has already been praying for what we need. We don't know it yet, but you see, when it comes to our awareness, he's already been praying for it. We have confidence as we go forward as individuals and as a church because we know that Jesus Christ's prayers are perpetual. We sometimes get tired and we sometimes feel a bit weary. He doesn't. And those things that I need in my life, he keeps praying for it. Keeps praying for it. And the Father keeps receiving this beautiful perfume. Incense, sweet and holy. But that's why we should pray all the time. That's why men should lift their hands in, in prayer without ceasing. That's why there should be no lacking. I want my Father to receive from me the glorious perfume of Jesus. So here we have this altar that is not going to decay. It's a sacred thing. And we have to pass through the incense, the aroma as we enter in to the presence of God because it's placed right there so that we cannot come without bringing the smell of Christ. That's why I was driving in tonight and one of these buses was in front of me yet again with a stupid big banner on the back of it or poster on the back of it saying to all and sundry in the name of the Alpha Course, saying to all and sundry, try praying. Don't bother. Because if you are not entering into the presence of God, bearing upon you the fragrance of this sweet and holy incense of Christ, your prayers will not be answered. They will not be heard. The only prayer a sinner can pray is, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. If you want your prayers to be heard by Almighty God, you need to enter bearing upon you this incense, sweet and holy. And that's what we're about to do. What a privilege it is to be a son of the living God. Heavenly Father, as we bow before you, we thank you that you have given us the great privilege of coming into your very presence. As we come to you, Lord God, we don't come to you to try praying. We come to you, Lord God, to lay hold of the throne of grace and ask that your will would be done in our lives. We will bring our requests. We will bring our concerns. And we do so because of Jesus. Our prayer is tonight, Father, that you would receive from us this beautiful aroma, the aroma of our Savior. Be pleased tonight because we stand before you in Jesus Christ. Lord, our lives can be 
complicated at times. They can be difficult at times. But we are believers. And we carry upon us. That sweet fragrance. May it fill the place tonight. May that sweet incense, that holy aroma, may it fill this place tonight, Lord. May we be able to smell the beauty of all that he has done. Father, glorify yourself in all that we do now. May each one of us release sweetness right into the throne room of God. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.